One of the more common types of cancer that you talk about in the Dog Cancer Survival Guide is osteosarcoma. Dr. Dressler, I'll throw this out to you first. If you have a dog who has osteosarcoma, what are the signs and symptoms that you may notice? One of the most common is a limp, and this is a tricky cancer uh, because in the early stages, it can often be misdiagnosed as a sprain or a soft tissue injury. So and the osteosarcoma is a, is, a, is a bone cancer? It is a bone okay. cancer, yeah, and it most commonly occurs in larger giant breed dogs, but not always, and it most commonly occurs in the legs and the long bones of the limbs but not always. So your typical case of osteosarcoma, giant breed dog, and, it, and the way that it first shows up is with a limb because there's a tumor growing in the bone. That's the most common presentation. However, it doesn't always have to look like that. It can occasionally occur in the bones of small breed dogs. And sometimes it can not only involve the legs, occasionally it'll involve other big bony parts of the skeleton, like the shoulder blade uh, or the pelvis or the, the ribs or, other areas like that. Dr. Ettinger, New York, your thoughts on osteosarcoma? Yeah, I think it's important to think about the cancer in two different ways. One is it's a very aggressive cancer, in, as we say, locally in the bone. So it's gonna destroy the normal bone and eat away at the normal bone of the dog, which is painful for them, and lay down disorganized bone. And so it's really aggressive locally in the bone and will predispose the dogs to actually fracturing their leg. The other way that this cancer is aggressive, it has a very high spread rate or metastatic rate. And we know that 90% of dogs that um, at the time of diagnosis, even with normal chest x-rays, the cancer is already spread. We just can't detect it. So it's one of the cancers that not just treating the cancer in the bone, but treating the dog's body systemically is, is as important and has been shown to have the dog statistically live longer if you both, again, treat the primary cancer, usually with surgery, and then follow up with something systemic like chemotherapy. Dr. Dressler, your thoughts about treating osteosarcoma? I absolutely agree. Early intervention is so important. Get those x-rays if you have a limping dog, everybody, especially if you have a giant breed dog, so you can rule out bone tumor. Absolutely, surgery is critically important. Chemotherapy has its place. We can't forget about apotogens, which are those plant-derived supplements that help to com uh, turn on cell suicide in cancer cells. Diet is also uh, an important part of therapy and life quality enrichment, uh, which uh, can be tailored for a dog that has already experienced an osteosarcoma uh, surgery, uh, which is an amputation many times. All of these different areas uh, need to be uh, addressed so that we can really get a, a long, uh, good life uh, when we're dealing with canine cancer. And if you are considering amputation surgery, there is another video in this Dog Cancer Answer series specifically about that and the issue of tripods. Dr. Dressler in Hawaii and Dr. Ettinger in New York, thank you so much. More information in the Dog Cancer Survival Guide. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.